Welcome to today's webinar, Pathways to Success, Helping Students with College and Career Decisions. This fourth webinar in the series is titled, Successful Paths to Hot Careers, Best Education and Perfect Jobs, Partnering with Families, presented by Martha Penna, Carrie Kroll, and Dr. Judith Harakevich. My name is Greg Nagy, and I'm the Virtual Learning Community Manager from The Ohio State University, who provides technical support for the STEM Equity Pipeline Project. Before we start the presentation, I would like to go over some housekeeping items for this webinar. This webinar is scheduled to last roughly one hour, and it's being recorded in order to view the presentation in its entirety later. The recorded webinar will be available in the next few days on the stemequitypipeline.org website. As you've already found out, you'll be watching the presenter present slides through the Adobe Connect interface while listening to them talk over your computer speakers. All the participants' microphones have been automatically muted. You can access any of the links in the web links pod by clicking on the link and then clicking the Browse To button to open the link in a different tab in your browser. You can also download the slides and other files from the Files pod. Click on the file you want to download and then click the Download Files button. This will open the file as a link in a different tab in your browser. The presenters will, an an excuse me, the presenters will answer questions after the presentation. However, we can take questions at any time. This is how we're going to take questions. At any time during the presentation, you may submit a question by typing your question in the chat pod at the bottom right of your Adobe Connect window. We will read and respond to these questions at the end of the presentation. I'd like to start the webinar by introducing Freda Walker, Assistant Director of the STEM Equity Pipeline Project. Freda? Good afternoon. And welcome to the fourth in the webinar series, Pathways to Success. These webinars highlight the latest research regarding career. Uh oh, wait a minute. I'm not sharing my video yet. That'll help. Now you can see me. I'll start again. Good afternoon, and welcome to the fourth in the webinar series, Pathways to Success. These webinars highlight the latest research regarding career preparation and provide specific strategies that you can implement. Support for the webinar series is from the Minnesota Department of Education and from Minnesota State Colleges and Universities. They funded these webinars to inform all of you who have a role in helping students understand successful paths to high skill, high wage, and high demand jobs. On their behalf, I welcome you and our three presenters. Additional funding is from the National Science Foundation provided to NAEP for the STEM Equity Pipeline 2.0. This and past webinars are archived on the stemequitypipeline.org website. Uh, we are providing certificates of completion. If you are from Minnesota, it will come from the Minnesota Department of Education. and If not, it will come from NAEP, the National Alliance for Partnerships in Equity. I encourage participants to use the chat function to share resources and to type questions to the presenters. At the end of the presentations, I will read the questions to the presenters. Please remember to download the resources in the file section. Today's webinar is focused on parenting with partnering with families. We have three presenters. Martha Pena, a program manager from TechBridge in Oakland, California. Carrie Carell, the Career and Technical Education Coordinator, coordinator in Wisconsin for the Manitowoc Public School District, and Dr. Judith Harkovich, a Professor of Psychology, University of Wisconsin-Madison. After the presenters, I will review the resource documents and take questions. So Martha, I welcome you. Great. Good morning, everybody, or actually it's afternoon. It's morning for us. Um, my name is Martha Pena. I'm a program manager with TechBridge, and I'm excited to be here today. Um, for those of you who don't know what TechBridge is, we are an after-school program that focuses on teaching, teaching girls about STEM um, and engineering through our after-school programs. We focus on uh, training girls, teachers, role models, parents, and at the heart of our program, it's always doing family outreach. Um, our goal for today is to get uh, to teach participants strategies that focus on engaging and contacting parents on how to go about doing STEM with their kids. Martha? Yes. This is 
Gray, can you start your webcam? Oh, I'm sorry. Is it not on? No, you have to click. There you go. Thank you. Oh, is that great? Um, so there are several research out there that specifically talks about um, the importance of family participation. And in TechBridge, we strive to reach all of our girls' families. Last year, we evaluated our girls, and 73.8% of TechBridge girls we surveyed agreed that their families encouraged them to think about a career in STEM. Our families are from low-income neighborhoods, so family outreach isn't always the easiest. We try to overcome some of these challenges by reaching out to our families using a wide range of strategies. The first, the first and most important component of our programs are our family nights. We try and capture parents from the very beginning with a TechBridge family night in the fall. All TechBridge programs are required to host a fall and spring family event. Our family night nights are some of the most well-attended events at these schools, and it's because of all the girls and their personal role in preparing and organizing the event. Because the girls take the lead on setting up the agenda, preparing the presentations, and deciding on the food and decorations, they make sure their parents are there to see all of their hard work. During family nights, parents do short hands-on activities similar to the ones girls get to do in TechBridge. The girls lead the activity and teach their parents about engineering. This allows parents to learn about TechBridge. They see what goes on in TechBridge programs. And as a result, parents are more invested in TechBridge and know of our organization. This way, when we send out written materials, parents will recognize the logo and not think it's junk mail, which is a problem we've had in the past. We continue to provide families with additional resources throughout the school year. During the holiday season, we, select, we send out a holiday wish list of STEM toys for kids. Our list include toys like Connects, Goldie Blocks, and Snap Circuits. Some of these toys are marketed to boys, but we've discovered that girls love them just as much. Many parents tell us how grateful they were to receive this list in the mail and have purchased some of the gifts we have suggested not only for their daughters, but for their nieces. During the spring, all our parents receive our Summer Opportunities Guide, which is a list of summer programs. You can download a copy of the latest guide here on our webcast or on our website. All written material is always translated into Spanish and Chinese. This way, we ensure we reach all of our families. Oh, I think I might have jumped ahead. We feel it's important to keep our, farm, our families involved and up to date on all TechBridge programs. We do this through our TechBridge newsletter. The newsletter highlights each school, role model visits, and field trips. The newsletter is full of valuable information and lots of pictures of our girls. Parents love to see pictures of their daughters. A few years back, TechBridge developed a family science guide for parents. This guide gives parents tips on how to engage their children in science and provide sample activities as well as additional resources. This guide can also be downloaded on our website under the Family Matters section. TechBridge also makes a point to share additional online resources with all our families. These resources are distributed during family nights or by mail. Last but not least, we provide workshops for parents. These workshops provide parents with tips, activities, and additional resources that will help them introduce their children to STEM careers. Our family workshops are funded by the Chevron Corporation and are free to all families. Parents learn techniques they can use at home to expose their children to STEM. We work with parents on strategies they can use to talk with their kids about perseverance and working through challenges. We introduce parents to various engineering careers and provide them with additional resources that would help them feel confident and knowledgeable when talking about STEM careers. We actively reach out to various organizations around our community to bring our workshops, usually through email or direct calls. Once these organizations hear about our workshops, they're excited to host us. We've hosted our family workshops at Dare to be Digital Conference, EYH conferences, church and community organizations, various schools throughout the Bay Area, and some of our corporate partners like Google and Chevron. Um, I'd also like to share some additional resources. Um, every year, TechBridge hosts a summer institute, and we invite anybody to attend. It's, this year has been um, 
hosted on July 31st through August 2nd. And we also provide a role models toolkit for role models to uh, get tips and resources on how they can go about conducting a successful role model visit. And now I'd like to introduce Carrie Cruel. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we are doing um, through what we refer to as the Manitowoc Public School District STEM team. About four years ago, we were asked to partake as a secondary Carrie? partner in, yeah? Carrie, this is Freda. Can you start your webcam, please? Um, oh. All right, we'll start. Again. Thank you. Um, as, I'm Carrie Krull from the Manitowoc Public School District. Um, I have been working the last four years as the district STEM team leader, and our team is made up of some guidance counselors, technology education teachers, science teachers, math teachers, um, myself, and then also a colleague of mine who is uh, works in transition with students. First thing I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about a series of events that we have hosted over the last couple of years and how we have been able to involve parents in a successful way. One of the events that we planned, um, and this will be our third year this year, doing Girls Gaining STEAM. This is um, a half-day camp that we plan where girls are able to interact and do many different things with science, tech, engineering, and math. Um, it is sponsored by our local technical college, Lakeshore Tech College. Uh, Manitowoc Public Schools, and then also the Girl Scouts. One of the things that we did when we started this was we had contacted the local Girl Scouts and said, we want to create a, an event where we can bring in Girl Scout leaders and the, the students, the Girl Scouts, and allow them to earn a badge in a day. So what we did is originally they started out where they would earn the Science and Action Badge our first and second year. Um, the badges have since changed, so we um, aren't this year focusing so much on a badge, but still want to continue with the program just because we've had such great results from it. This program is geared to fourth and fifth grade girls. Um, they do not have to be in Girl Scouts. Again, Girl Scouts are just a partner, but they do not have to be in the Girl Scouts. One of the things that when we met with Girl Scouts, they said you will have parents there and you will have parents who hover. So you're going to want to find something to do for them. So the first year we decided we were going to have a parent session and we have continued with. And again, this year um, we'll also be offering a parent session. So I'll talk a little bit about that in a short time. The different sessions that we offer um, during the day and each year we have changed these sessions. So this year we're going to be offering two new sessions, one to do with technology, creating your own website, and the second one will be focusing on manufacturing and um, non-traditional occupations and welding. So the girls will actually be able to plasma cut and do a little bit of welding. We also have done um, Engineering 101, um, an activity that is called a slurping plant, which was part of the Girl Scout badge. We have done many things with um, iPads. We've also done a lot of great things with microscopes. So this year we're going to do a little bit different and look at some different um, plants and celery and um, some different bugs as well. We've also done all jet right over looking at transportation systems of the future as well. So those are just a couple session ideas that we have. In the parent session um, that we have offered, has been a great addition to the program. So we take the parents, we allow the students to be on their own with our instructors. And so the time that we have the parents, we typically keep them for a good hour and a half or two hours. Some of the topics that we cover with the parents, um, the first thing, we look at our WisconsinCareerPathways.org website. It's a great resource for parents um, in regard to even looking at some career interest surveys, looking at options as far as different the career clusters and pathways and what are um, several different options in regard to uh, careers in those areas. We also talk about job shadowing and opportunities for job shadowing um, and how students can get involved in that at their area schools. Um, our counselor, Jill Link, has been great talking about different summer camp opportunities. And the biggest question we seem to get from parents is funding on those. How do we fund those? So we've also shown them a lot of different potential scholarship opportunities as well. We've shown some video clips that actually have come from Celeste Bain in regard to um, women in NTO occupations. 
Um, we've talked about how do, how do they help their child select the appropriate courses in both the middle and high school. And again, we refer back to the WisconsinCareerPathways.org website, which really does lay out 9 through 12, um, depending upon the school and their involvement in that, has laid out some coursework as far as based on some career interests. We also um, talk about the different programs and opportunities that are out there in regard to career interest surveys. We show them many different websites. We look at the WisconsinCareerPathways.org, the WIS careers, just to name a few. Um, we talk about college options. One of the things that we have found is that our students, um, in particular the parents, are um, adamant really about a four-year college bound and thinking that's the best route. However, um, when we really look at two-year college, four-year college and start showing them some of the related careers and the salaries attached to that, um, I think it's a very eye-opening for the parents involved in that and when we have that discussion about two-year versus four-year. And here are some options. We have great options at our technical colleges that lead them into skilled careers. Um, so all, all sorts of different things. We also talk about ACT scores. That has come up as a question. We have elaborated every year and have been adding things since our first year. Um, really, what do those scores mean and what are colleges looking for? What do they look at when they look at those scores and when they're looking um, on somebody entering their college, both at the two-year and the four-year level? And then we um, highlight the great employment opportunities in STEM, such as engineering, and we talk about um, the population, obviously, we're serving that day, the fourth and fifth grade girls. We talk about the opportunities for women in those non-traditional occupations and scholarships um, and all the great opportunities that they have. These are just some pictures from the event. So um, just a couple things that I'll highlight. Um, the bridge building was an activity in the, the bottom left-hand corner. Um, the activities that they're doing. We've also asked parents to come. So when the parents are not with us for the hour and a half or two hours, they are hands-on working with the girls in the different activities. So parents are going over and watching their child weld and do some plasma cutting. Um, they're going over in their engineering 101. So last year they were driving around different robots, the Lego robots, the VEX robotics, and even the first robotics. So trying out new things that they haven't seen or done before. Another family event, um, one of the things that we have worked really hard on is um, really trying to take the barriers away that prohibit families from participating in events. We have been working very closely with one of our elementary schools, Jefferson Elementary in Manitowoc, and um, one of the events we did last year was we decided to have a family event. So Blue Harbor, which is a resort in Sheboygan, which is about 25 minutes from us, was hosting an event with the Mine Truckers. Um, the Mine Truckers are out of Michigan Tech University, so I have the link there for you. And what we did is we took a, um, two buses loaded with 40 students and their families to this event. The event was free. It provided some great hands-on science activities and opportunities. Our students had a great time. But then we also enabled the families to come along with them, making it that family event. Um, there were some educational materials provided to those parents as well. And then it basically, it also gave students a great opportunity to explore potential career interests in the science area. And you can see here are just some of the activities that those students um, did that day. One of the barriers that our family had is their child is um, handicapped and is in a wheelchair. And so they had called and said, we would really love to do this. We don't get to do a lot of things together. Um, so we just provided a handicap bus, and this family was just got a thank you card afterwards. Thank you so much for providing us with the opportunity. So again, we really try to focus on removing the barriers. Another event that we did, um, this happened last May, and this was um, a partnering. We have partnered quite a bit, and we'll have some events coming up with them again with our Wisconsin Maritime Museum that's located here in Manitowoc. Um, the home of the US Cobia, USS Cobia sub. So one of the events that we did last year was um, STEM to CERN, a night at the museum. So what the idea behind this was to open it up to families again, get them into the museum, and um, several different activities that we did with the students, and obviously parents came along. It was actually a requirement that parents needed to attend with their children and participate in the activities. So it was a free family event. Um, and again, their parents did have to come with them. It wasn't just a drop your child off. Parents needed to be with them. We did um, the physics of torpedoes, hydrodynamics of hull design using aluminum foil, the power of steam, mathematics of model making, the effects of salt and seawater, 
Um, at the very end, the students, we basically had a very large table with all sorts of different materials on, and the students did boat building. We also did some tours around the museum, tours of the sub, and then um, at the end, the students were able to participate in a scavenger hunt, which was really exciting. So on the right-hand side of this picture, you'll see that is actually on the sub in the torpedo room. So they did a little bit of education with the students in regard to um, how do torpedoes work, what is the science behind it. And then they actually were able to go on top of the sub, and you can see them with the straws. Um, and we actually put frozen peas into the straws, and they were launching them like a torpedo, kind of going through um, the physics of how those work. You can also see a couple of the boat building at the end. So it really gave students, we just put a large table of materials out, build a boat, and then they could go next door into the waterway room, which you can see on the bottom left-hand side, um, and actually test those boats out using the different things that they learned throughout the evening. We have a lot of um, events planned actually coming up in the next couple of weeks here, so I'm just going to go over some um, events and activities that we have planned for the rest of the year and how we're really going to incorporate parents into them. So again, we have another family event which is coming up on March 19th, so two weeks from, um, actually that is next week, Tuesday, one week from today. And what we are doing there is we have a individual coming out of Chicago that is going to do an underwater detective. Um, events. So the students basically are going to be working through what they would do if, um, upon a shipwreck. So it's a very neat program, again, very family oriented. So what we are doing is providing a meal for the families. And the families are coming. This is open to all parents and students at Jefferson Elementary School. So this is grades, um, first grade through sixth grade at our elementary school. And the students are going to go through the activity. It is free to families, so we'll feed them dinner. They'll go through the activity. It'll be a couple hour event. Um, and the families, again, will be participating. The parents will participate with their children as well. The other event that we have, actually this Thursday evening, we have partnered with our Maritime Museum again. And we are going to do what we call a slumber party on the USS Cobia. One of the great things that our Maritime Museum offers is overnights on the sub, where students are actually able to sleep on the sub. Um, majority of individuals are coming out of Illinois that typically do this, um, and they're Cub Scout, Boy Scout troops. So we really wanted to open it up for a fun evening, um, but also to have some students who live in Manitowoc, maybe haven't even been on the sub, but don't necessarily um, have an opportunity to ever sleep on the sub. So we're very excited about that for this Thursday. We have a lot of great activities planned for the students. Um, we have quite a few of our chaperones. They're going to be actually parents of the students. So again, another way to incorporate those. And then um, the next event, we have Girls Gaining Steam, which I talked about earlier. This year we have one coming up on April 13th. Um, this year we have started, one of our science teachers has been doing some after school programming with our Jefferson Elementary again. So she has been working with students and doing Lego robotics. And then she also is doing some technology and doing some really neat things with iPads in the students um, at the elementary level. So one day a week, um, actually two days, one for Lego and one for the um, technology. She's at the elementary school doing the after school program. The great thing about this program is it is actually funded through several grants that are um, working with Jefferson. Jefferson is one of our schools um, that it has a lower socioeconomic status, so they um, have had some great after-school programming and have a lot of grant funds to cover that. The other thing we've had the great opportunity to do is to do college tours. Um, last year we had the wonderful opportunity to go to Madison Area Technical College and our students worked with one of the electrical en engineers there who was a female and they were able to do um, a lot of different hands-on activities and the, the best part of that was I had a student who was four-year college bound and had made her decision and was going to go for psychology, actually. She was exposed to this um, through the college tour that we did, and she is now going to MATC for that program next year. So lots of great things happening. One of the other things that we do is we pair our junior high students with the high school students, so we kind of have a mentoring program when we're doing that. So we're not just taking them to look at the different colleges, but they're also we have a mentoring with it. So those um, older students who are juniors and seniors are working with our younger students who are 7th, 8th, or ninth graders. 
And the last one is um, a new event that is, I'm, we're partnering with our local Chamber of Commerce and the Manitowoc County Partners and Education Committee, which I'm actually the chair of. And we are doing an event for elementary school students called Careers on Wheels. And this is an event where um, any career that can happen that has wheels is going to come to a parking lot. And our students are going to be exposed to a lot of great careers on wheels. And um, so for an example for that, we have the fire trucks. We're actually having the Coast Guard helicopter come. So lots of great opportunities um, that our students will be exposed to. We have tractor coming. Um, we'll have uh, the ambulance and the fire truck, those as well but exposing them to different options as well. We are also going to focus on different STEM careers, so that um, will be a great event, and we're offering that to all our Manitowoc Public School District students um, in the fifth grade. So that event is going to be geared for solely fifth grade students. Um, past activities we've done, we've done a STEM speaker week, and actually almost every single one of our speakers was a parent, and we really focused on the non-traditional occupations. So we had a female engineer, a female food scientist, a um, female CEO from Lakeside Foods, a large company in our area, local, and a um, female accountant come in and speak to our students. It was on a sign-up basis for students that were interested in those careers. Um, college touring, we're going to continue um, with that. We've done that in the past. That has been um, a great advantage to our students, and the mentoring um, is a very large part of it. We also have done an engineering summer school program where we um, included some job, job shadowing as part of that. Um, the Mind Trekkers family event that I talked about, as well as the STEM to Stern event. One other thing that I'll mention, um, I know that funding is probably one of the questions that will come up, and we have been very lucky. When we started four years ago in the STEM Equity Pipeline project, we were funded by our state-level Carl Perkins grant. Um, and we have since continued to be funded, even though the STEM Equity Pipeline project for Wisconsin is um, done, we have now continued basically to be funded because of some of the great things and activities that we are doing and providing to our students. Um, so that's very exciting for us that we're able to do this. The other thing that we've done is we've really reached out into our community to get sponsorships. Um, so when we brought the families to Sheboygan for the um, Mine Trekkers family event, Subway actually gave us a great deal and donated majority of the food that fed them for lunch on the way home. So lots of great partnership opportunities out there. We've also found there's a lot of STEM grants, even in the amounts of $1,000, and a lot of these events and activities do not cost a lot um, to do. So that has been a great advantage as well in regard to the funding side of it. The other thing I'll mention that, um, again, I'm the chair of the Manitowoc County Partners and Ed Committee that I work through with our chamber, and that has allowed us the great things. One of the things that we are working on currently now is really talking about how do we educate our parents, and how do we educate them on the career options that are available, the college's opportunities that are available, just making sure they have the right um, education pieces to make good decisions and help their children make good decisions. So one of the things that we are doing is we are talking about several different events that we are going to host for parents. Um, and in conjunction with some of the business partners on that committee, they had stated, we have those parents every day at our workplace for 8 to 10 hours a day, if not more. So one of the things that we have done is um, we are looking at providing what we call lunch and learns to parents during their lunch hour, going into the business, inviting people that would like to join, and just providing them with college and career information um, so we can provide them with the tools that they need to help their students. We've also talked about a career expo for parents, so they can even see locally what opportunities are available for um, their children here in regard to, again, college and those career options. All right, next I am going to pass it on to Judith. Hi, um, I'm going to be doing something a bit different. I am a research psychologist. I study motivation. And um, one of the things we've been interested in over the years is um, how perceptions of utility value affect both interest, which is really important, which these programs I've been hearing about are awesome in developing interest um, in kids. Um, but how the perception that something is valuable or connected to your life or might help you in the future would affect both your interest in that material and help you perform better as well. And so we've been doing, um, I've, somebody says they can't see me, but I did turn on my webcam. <laughs> Can you hear me? <laughs> um, 
Judith, this is Greg. Yeah, we can hear you. One when you do time. your webcam, you have to click it one more time to show it. To share. I don't see the other button. You start it, and then there's another button on it. <laughs> I see me. Um, video. Okay. And then within the video, there should be a... At the bottom. It may, bottom Judith, be at mine. the very top. Start sharing. Share my... Start sharing. Is that me? <laughs> now do you see me? Okay, sorry about that. Um, yep. So I, where was I? <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, so with my colleagues, Janet Hyde, a professor here at UW-Madison, my graduate student, Chris Rozek, and my former graduate student, Chris Holloman, who's now a faculty member at the University of Virginia, we did a study to see whether or not um, we could help parents first understand how important math and science are for their kids, whether we could get them to talk to their kids about the importance of math and science, and whether we could see whether this kind of intervention would get their kids to take more math and science courses. We're dealing with high school students making important decisions, and in particular, we're interested in getting them to take more math and, and science classes in high school. Okay. so. This is a, an article that came out quite a while ago, well, about a year ago, by um, Thomas Friedman, arguing that um, we need better parents. There's a certain amount of hand-wringing whenever these big studies come out showing that our country is lagging behind others. And he views parenting as a problem. But um, in our research, we're thinking of parents as an untapped resource and, and as perhaps um, underappreciated and underutilized. In, in motivating students to take math and science. So the questions we addressed in this research study were, could we convince parents of the utility value of math and science for their teen? Can those parents help their children discover and appreciate the utility value of these courses? And ultimately, can we help the parents help their kids? Can we convince them to talk to their kids? And will this influence their teen's course-taking behavior? OK. So let me tell you about the sample that we're using and the background for the study. Janet Hyde, my colleague, has been conducting a longitudinal study in the state of Wisconsin um, for a long time, since 1990. The kids in this study have been in the study from before they were born, because she recruited pregnant women um, and was originally interested in um, development of the younger kids. Oh, did the cat walk by? <laughs> Um, and she continues to follow the families today, in this, and they've been following these families um, every year with questionnaires, interviews, physiological measures, and so forth. Um, the kids in this longitudinal project are just finishing college now, so it's really an amazing longitudinal study. The study I'm going to talk about is with um, 181 families. The, the teenagers in these families were in 108 different high schools. The majority of them are in the greater Milwaukee area. I'm kind of wondering if any are in Manitowoc right now. Um, but um, the, because the sample was recruited around Milwaukee and Madison. OK. so. It's, it's, again, it's an amazing study. The kids are all over the state, and some of them have moved away, and we follow them as well. Where I joined this project was when the teens were in 10th grade, and we did a randomized intervention with parents. It's really a unique opportunity to be able to do a randomized experiment in an ongoing longitudinal study. Um, it's a three-part intervention. In 10th grade, we mailed a brochure to parents. In 11th grade, we mailed a second brochure to parents. And we also built a website for them. And we followed um, the teens and their parents through the teens' graduation from high school in this, in this study. And we're still continuing to collect data from the kids. So what's the intervention? This is something you can look at more on the website that we've provided, assuming it works for you. Um, there are 81 families who are randomly assigned to receive what we're calling a utility value intervention, these two brochures and the website. And 100 families do not. They're in the control group. Okay. 
we mailed the brochure in 10th grade, in 11th grade, and then 11th grade is when they got the password protected website. And what I want to emphasize that this is an intervention exclusively directed at parents. We never intervened with the kids. We're intervening with the parents and hoping that they'll talk to their kids and convince them of the importance and value of, of math and science. This, uh, these are just a couple sample pages from the brochures. This is the first one, making connections, helping your teen find value in school. This is our focus is on helping kids think about why these things are important. This is from the letter that we sent to parents explaining what the point was. Do you ever wonder what you can do to help your kids succeed in school? There's a simple thing you can do. Help your child make connections between school and life. Um, and so the goal of these brochures is to first convince parents that math and science are important for their kids to help them think about how to talk to their kids about math and science and then give them some talking points that they can use as they in their conversations with their kids. So here's a page where we're talking where we're giving some advice about how to talk to your kid, when to do it, how to do it. We give them some talking points about um, that they can talk about the connections between biology, chemistry, physics, and math and everyday life and future careers. In the second brochure, when the kids are now in 11th grade and starting to think about college and the choices ahead, we focus a little bit more on the upcoming choices. Um, we gave them some more explicit guidance. We discussed some of the challenges they might be experiencing. And the, these pages are from the second brochure, Helping Your Teen Find Value in Math and Science. We talked about the research findings and how to connect to your teen the importance on the lower right there of te not telling students about value, but rather helping them discover value on their own. This is something that our, our other research has shown to be very important. That when students are the ones who find the connections, it's more powerful. But parents can facilitate that process of their kid coming to see connections between math and science in their own life. Okay. So here are some more pages from the brochures. You can download these brochures from our website. The, web, the website's no longer active because the study is over, and some of the links on there are disabled. But you can get a sense of the places we were sending parents if they were interested, and you can download these brochures there. The website was available only to families in the study in the experimental group. Um, one of the things that we had on there that parents really liked was interviews with current UW students in different fields discussing the courses they took in high school and talking about why they're really glad they took physics or why calculus in high school was helpful, for example. There are clickable links. There were clickable links on the website so that parents could go further and deeper in, in a variety of fields. There were also opportunities for parents to email links to their teens, and we could study whether they did that. Okay, so it's it's a modest intervention, if you will, because we're just sending brochures and creating a website, but we're doing it on a random basis so we can really test whether this is working. Um, so the first thing we want to know is, did, did we have any impact? So, um, did it affect parents' behavior? And what we found was that in 86% of the families, the parents reported that they shared some of these resources with their teen. In 82% of the families, at least one parent logged into the website. And this is probably the most important finding. In 75% of the families, the teens themselves confirmed that they had been exposed to either the brochure or the website. So we succeeded in putting resources in front of parents that they used to some degree. Okay. I think I just. Um, just a page. All right. All right. My graphs are gone. I don't know what happened. I don't. It looks like um, it looks like the graphs are not in this um version of the PowerPoint. I thought I had put them in. And so I will just tell you what we found without showing them the results to you quantitatively. I'm sorry about that. But one of the first thing that we found 
was that um, mothers ex reported more utility value. In the experimental group, the mothers who received these materials gave higher ratings of the importance of math and science for their teens. So they, we seem to have convinced them. We then interviewed kids whether they'd had more um, conversations with their parents about the importance of math and science. And the teens reported that over the last year of high school, they had, they had more conversations with their parents. So from the teens' point of view, they were hearing more about, from their parents about the importance of math and science. But the most important finding from this study and, the, and, and it was a significant finding in a randomized intervention study, we found that the, the teens whose parents were exposed to our resources actually took more math and science courses over the last two years of high school. The, the size of the effect on average was about a semester more of math or science. So this very modest intervention with parents, two brochures and, and a dedicated website, yielded a significant change in the team's course-taking behavior. And so I think what our experimental findings show is that we can influence parents, that these kind of resources help parents, and that teen, and parents are able to help their teens um, think about the importance of math and science and preparing for careers in the future, and that with interventions like this, we can change the course-taking patterns of kids. So um, with that, I will turn it back to Frida. Frida. Thank you. Can you hear me? I think I've got everything going. <clears throat> Thanks, Greg. I wanted to, uh, yes, we can. I'll thank all the presenters later, but I'm excited about all the things that I heard. One of the things that we wanted to do is to provide the group with a resource document that you can download today. And if you look in the file section, you'll find the PowerPoint from today, which has some of the resources that the speakers have referred to. And it also, um, these uh, links are also in this document. So if you look for the Parenting with Families resource document down in the files, you can download it. And I want you to be aware of some of the uh, resources that we have listed. For example, there's a really great article uh, by Jeffrey Weld. And uh, you can download that one actually from the files here. But uh, there are a lot of uh, resources that are on the NASA uh, site that relate to parents. Um, you can also go to the Iowa's Governor STEM Advisory Council. It has resources. Uh, the NTCA. Um, they have brochures that are in English and Spanish that are for parents to help their children with career development. You also can go to the Parent Resource Guide in English and Spanish that's from the American Careers Parent Magazine. Um, they're also uh, the National, uh, the Girl Scouts National Research Institute has um, a whole um, research study that you can download for free, and it has about Generation STEM. Uh, you'll find that some of their top findings are, um, you know, about the majority of girls find STEM fields interesting. They're interested in the process of learning, of asking questions, and develop, uh, problem solving. Um, girls interested in STEM are high achievers who, su who have supportive adult networks and are exposed to STEM fields. So you can sort of see that there's um, a lot of research that other institutes have done that we can utilize. Um, the next thing I'd like to do is just open this up for questions. And the greatest thing that's been happening is that their um, the question answering has been going on. But we'll do some orally, because I'd like to have it recorded. So I'm going to start at the very top with the first question. And this one is um, to Martha. It was about TechBridge. And it asked, at what age are the girls in your program? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Great. Um, we start um, as young as fifth grade, and we have programs that run all the way up to high school. OK, thank you. And um, the next question is for Carrie. Uh, when and where are these events held that you describe in your presentation? 
Okay, um, the different events, and actually majority of them are taking place locally in Manitowoc and Wisconsin. Um, we have the one, the Girls Gaining STEAM event takes place at Lakeshore Technical College, which is nearby. It's um, in Cleveland, Wisconsin, so about 20 minutes from Manitowoc, if that, 15, 20 minutes away. Um, so all within range. The one thing I will mention as far as location, last year when we did the Girls Gaining STEAM event, we had students come um, and drive an hour and a half to be at the event. So one girl came from the Door County area, um, and we had a couple students coming from the Green Bay area. So it was great to see um, people traveling a distance to participate in the different events. So we advertise to a wide range of individuals. Okay, just a second here. I'm looking at questions that are coming in. Um, Carrie, someone asked a question about were any of these events happening in Houston, Texas? Uh, can you address um, whether people, I know these events are only happening locally for you, but are there ways that they could, um, say, utilize some of your ideas and get some of the um, people at the in their own community to participate? Um, definitely, and I'm always willing to share any information, any brochures. Um, several of them are actually in the files that you can download, such as the Slumber Party, the STEM to Stern, the Girls Gaining STEAM brochure that we've created. Um, so I think it is a very feasible to have anyone really partner with you know, their local technical college, their local colleges, um, community partnerships to make it happen in their state. So yes, these are all local for us but they're definitely within um, reason to partner and make these happen in your own area. Okay, our next question had to do was how well are diverse and non-English speaker families engaged uh, and do you use different techniques? Um, yeah, we actually have a very large monk population within our community. Um, the family events that are targeted and we're working with our Jefferson Elementary students, um, what we've done is we've partnered and worked with one of our um, monk interpreters as well as a, one of our Hispanic speaking interpreters. Um, and we've had much greater participation from the Hmong population than I thought we would. Um, actually, for our, our event that's taking place next week, we have several families. Um, that are from the Hmong population, so we're excited that that is taking place, and I think it just really is, again, about partnering with the people that you have. So in our case, it's our interpreters in our local school district that we work with all the time. Thank you. Um, let's see. I think you've already answered about the Hmong, the question if Hmong families were involved. Uh, you did say that over 50% of the participation in these are also among the Hmong population. Uh, okay, our next question. Oh, go ahead, Carrie. You want to comment? Um, the 50%, that was in regard to the college tours, and I think that has to do a little bit with barriers, um, especially with the language barriers that happen in fa um, families. So one thing, when we do these college tours, I w again, over half of those students are our Hmong students. Um, and we feel really strongly about providing these opportunities to get to these colleges and see what's out there um, and what options they have for college and also for career options um, because we don't know that they would be exposed to that otherwise because of some of those language barriers. Thank you. And Carrie, uh, is there, um, I'm trying to think, uh, I think that, well, in that resource document that I had, there is a, a way to email you if people want to get uh, more information about how to duplicate some of the things that you're doing. Yeah, and there was actually a contact slide at the end that I um, just jumped over at the end of my presentation that has all my information as well. Okay, thank you. And also, you can get a hold of um, Martha with her, um, you know, her uh, contact information about the things that they're doing um, in their uh, tech bridge. Okay, I think the next questions have to do with the brochures. So Judith, uh, these are ones they want to, how effective are, brochure, the, are brochures and a website for educating low income or non-English speaking, particularly those who may not have access to the internet or computers? Well, that's an absolutely critical question and, and something that we've thought a lot about. Um, when we looked at our findings, and you can, um, our paper is downloadable from that website if you can get onto it if you want to look at the findings in more detail. But we did find that our we we have in our sample a good range of income level, and at the lowest levels of income, the intervention was 
was very effective. Um, we did have, of the um, 81 families, one or two that had problems with Internet access. Um, and in those cases, we sent everything to them as a hard copy. But as one of the things we really want to do with this research is get our materials translated and test them in different populations. Um, we're encouraged that our, um, our interventions worked at across levels of education in, in our sample, but we need a broader one to really test this. We, we had a very representative sample of Wisconsin, but Wisconsin is not a very um, diverse state. And one of the things we hope to do in the future is, is translate these materials probably into Spanish first and try them in different communities. It's, um, I think it's going to take extra work to make this material available to those families, but we're very encouraged that it's worth trying. Well, and I would add that I believe that there's a school district in San Jose, California, that is interested in uh, translating them into Spanish. So maybe we'll see something come out of that as you all work together on that. Um, also, uh, someone asked about the brochures. Um, they actually, if you look over in the files section, you can download both of the brochures from our download right today. So be sure and do that. Um, let's see, the next question, are brochures available to be sent to schools or are they just online? Well, so can, I guess they're asking, can people buy them or get them or? We're, we're just researchers, <laughs> which is, um, so we, they can be downloaded and printed um, by anyone. They're, they're there as a resource. I think, um, you know, there are PDF files on their website. They're, they're available to people, but we don't mass produce them or sell them ourselves. Um, Okay, so I'm going to say again, go over to the files section and download those P the two PDF files. Um, let me make sure that you know the name of them. Uh, one, they're together. One is called Helping Your Teen Find Value. is a PDF file. And the next one is Making Connections Choices Ahead, da-da-da-da, and it's a PDF file. So you can download those today. You can print them off and use them. And I would uh, encourage any of you that do this to uh, let, um, I'd love to know uh, and be able to share this with the NAEP um, leadership if you have utilized some from this webinar and then you're working with it as a field test. OK, do we have any other questions? Anybody else? No. OK, let me see if I can move forward with my the slides. I will move on down. Uh oh, I went the wrong way. Sorry. You get a little review this way. I just want to thank Martha and Carrie and Judith. And I wanted to tell you that I felt like I learned about some excellent strategies today and that really have ha that have positive success. And I live in a very small community. And I'm going to take the ideas back to my school district to see if I can get some people engaged in doing some of these kinds of activities and also to use the brochures. I also want to thank the Minnesota Department of Education and the Minnesota State Colleges and Universities, NAEP, and the National Science Foundation. Please join us for our fifth and final webinar in this series. It will be April the 9th. Uh, it is a, a partnering with business and industry and community organizations. We hope that you can join us. Uh, also, I encourage you to join our virtual learning uh, community and view archived webinars. And this is our website, the stemequitypipeline.org. Uh, we have a professional development institute in Washington, D.C. area. You can register at the NAEP.org, uh, NAEPEquity.org website. Um, if you want to complete a cert certificate of completion, you need to complete page two of the evaluation survey. And Greg is going to upload the evaluation survey. And I just wanted you to be aware that page one and page two are they come together in the survey, but they're not connected so that we 
uh, you know, you stay anonymous in your response to our webinar. We appreciate getting input about the webinar so that we know how we can best serve you with your professional development needs. So thank you very much. And Greg, I'll turn it over to you. All right, thank you, Freda. So thank you for joining us today, everyone. Remember, this webinar will be available on the stemequitypipeline.org website on the home page and also under the professional development heading and then under the STEM Equity Pipeline archived webinars heading in the next few days. For the live webinar, I have put up a short survey in your tab in the web browser right now. Please comp complete this for us now. You will also be sent an email with a link to the survey in case you do not have time to fill this out for us now. For the archived webinar, please refer back to your registration email with the link to the survey.